Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to another Saturday Cars and Coffee with me, Kenny Brown. For over the next hour or so, we're going to be talking a little tech, uh, answer your questions. And I've got a, a couple of interesting things to talk to you about today. If you are on F Facebook or having trouble with Facebook, go to our YouTube channel. Uh, there seems to be some issues with Facebook uh, recently. So like I say, if you're on Facebook and you're having a problem, switch over to our YouTube channel where everything should be okay there. <clears throat> so what do we got for today? Well, let's see. We're going to talk alignment. We've had a number of questions come in on alignment specs. So I'm going to talk some alignment specs today. Uh, something about ditched idler boost. We had in uh, one of our customers' cars is racing in uh, AI American Iron X uh, in NASA in the 99 Cobra. A uh, really, really badass motor has really been struggling with uh, the, the hydro boost. Either has brakes or steering. Sometimes he has both. Sometimes it has only one. So we we ditched the hydro boost. We switched that all over to manual. I'll show that coming up here in a minute. Let's see. Uh, we've got transform your driving experience workshop coming up. Uh, also, if you had some other questions on pinion angle, what do you do with pinion angle? So we're going to talk about uh, what pinion angle should be and why it should be. And then, of course, I will answer your questions live. So if you do have questions, uh, please send them in, and I'll do my best to answer them if I can. And we've got, yeah, we've got some pretty decent questions today. So I've got to remember, you can send the questions in live or through the Speed Therapy Society, uh, Kenny Brown Speed Therapy Society. Uh, if you're not a member, uh, please think about joining. There's a lot of really like-minded people there. Uh, I think you enjoy the, the camaraderie. There's a, lot, a lot of people share a lot of stuff. So what should we start with? I know what we're going to start with. We're going to start with what I left off last week. Now, last week, uh, somebody asked about if, if there's a larger uh, saddle tank, the S197 Mustangs. And the answer, unfortunately, is no. In fact, there isn't even a, a fuel cell for the saddle tank. And I was saying I mean, the only thing to do is, is just, you know, you know, cut the back of the car out and put a fuel a fuel cell in. But then somebody reminded me that, you know, they had spare tire fuel cells. Uh, so, yeah, I said I would get some information, and I have some information. So let me, let me load up my PowerPoint. Okay. Just in case you missed it, <laughs> this is Live Cars and Coffee with me, Kenny Brown your gracious host for the likes a little bit, answering your questions. Okay, this is this is a, a spare tire. It's, it drops in the spare tire well in the back of a car, and they call it the Enduro system. And it actually, it holds 11 and a half gallons, uh, which is quite a bit. And the only thing is you have to, you have to work out how to get the fuel from the, the, the spare tank into your regular fuel tank. And it's typically done with, uh, with, with a pump. Uh, but that's something you'd have to sort out yourself. But this this is what this is what the a typical fuel cell looks like. You've got what they call the can. Uh, it's either aluminum or, or or steel, and then you've got the cell itself inside. It's you know ballistic proof cell, and then inside of that you've got all this foam, which keeps the gas from sloshing around. Uh, that's why fuel cells are, are so good in racing because the gas doesn't slosh around. You get all this this uh, marvelous foam that kind of keeps it in place. So that's where and I get back to. Okay, so that, that's on the fuel cell. I mean, you, you, had, you get 16 gallons. I think Mustang has an, an extra uh, 11 and a half to it. That's what, 60, 70% more fuel. So if you're doing endurance racing, uh, I mean, that, that would go a long ways. Uh, and the thing about endurance racing is, the key to endurance racing is making laps. You know, it's making laps, making laps, making laps. Anytime you're sitting in the pits, you're not making laps. So if you can knock out a couple, three pit stops by having more fuel on board, then you're going to make more laps. So anyway, that's, uh, that, that, that's the answer to last week's question. Now, coming up on this week's question, uh, oh, something else people asked about is how to set pinion angle. Okay. I use a couple of props here, radius rods. We, we got ten of these around here. We use them in a lot, a lot of things. Our control arms, our panner bars, uh, the K-link, all uses radius rods. Okay, so let's say what what you want to do, you want to have opposite angles from the transmission 
and the rear end. So let's say this is your transmission and it's pointing, let's say three degrees down, okay? If it's pointing three degrees down, then you would want your differential to point three degrees up. Now, if they point exactly the same, what happens is the drive shaft will turn into a jump rope. If they point the same, again, jump rope. If they point in the same direction, jump rope. So the whole idea is you got U joints in there, so you want the angles to be opposing. Three, three degrees down on the engine, three degrees up on the differential. And you know, how do you check that? I mean, the best way to check is with the drive shaft out, unfortunately. And you get an angle gauge, and with the drive shaft out, the output shaft of the transmission has got a perfectly flat surface. You can put an angle gauge on that and get a good read on what the angle of inclination is for, for, for the engine and transmission. And then the same thing on the differential. It's got a flat surface. You just put your, your angle gauge up there, and there you go. You... Uh, you get get your uh, uh, angles so okay so that's uh that's the uh, pinion angle uh let's, let's let's jump into some alignment because everybody always asks about alignment and it's alignment is really super important let's see okay there's a fuel cell now to understand alignment, you have to understand what it does. There's, there's, there's actually three things, ca camber, caster, and toe. And camber is the, is, the, the, is the tire tips outward at the top that's positive. If it tips inward, that's negative. Now, caster is if it tips backwards, it's, neg it's positive. And that's what we want. We want a lot of positive caster. So here's, here's the three elements you got. There's a negative camber would be tipped into top. Positive camber would be tipped out at the top. Toe in is exactly what it says. It's pointing inward and toe out is pointing outward. And you always either have to have toe in or toe out uh, to make the car track well. And then caster, the negative caster is if, if, the, if the strut leans forward, that's negative caster. If the strut leans backwards, that's positive caster. Uh, positive caster is what you want. If you had if you had negative caster, uh, what would happen? Have you ever had a shopping cart where? Uh, there we go back. Have you ever had a shopping cart where you're rolling along, and one of the wheels go keeps vibrating back and forth? Well, that's what happens when you don't have enough caster. Uh, you, you get to lose the caster and the wobble. Well, same thing would happen with your wheel. So I mean, I I love caster. All my Mustangs put absolute maximum caster in. Doesn't matter if it's different side to side, all the cast rotate, it goes in there for a lot of reasons. Uh, you know, one, I mean, it just helps the front suspension geometry a ton. It gives you great straight line stability. So when we're talking about, uh, we've got a camera, we've got an alignment guide. I'll hold that up there. You can actually download this in the, in the Kenny Brown Speed Therapy Society resource section. Uh, that's going to be in there. And Kenny, and that's, that's on the Kenny Brown Performance or Kenny Brown Speed Therapy Society Facebook group. It's important Kenny, that they know where to get it. It's at, on our Facebook group. Okay, Kenny Brown Speed Therapy Society Facebook group. Uh, it's in the resource section. You can, you can download it and you have it for yourself. But, but basically, I mean, it's pretty much the same. Uh, street, there's always the street and track. And for the, I'm going to go through this street setup for... Fox SN95, I like it around minus one degree negative camber in the front, uh, maximum caster. Uh, and then for toe, I like toe out, uh, not a lot, just a little one sixteenth of an inch total toe out or minus 0.25 to minus 0.3 toe out. Why do I like toe out? Because what it does, it helps the car turn in. Uh, it gives you great turn in when you go into a corner. Now for the... Uh, uh, S197s will go a little bit more, maybe a degree, degree and a quarter. But again, you know, maximum caster, all the caster will take, and then a little, and then that little bit of toe out, sixteenth toe out. And then on the uh, uh, 550s, I actually take a little more, minus one to minus 0.4. Uh, and then again, same toe out. Now on going back to SN95 for the IRS cars in the back, 
Uh, I like to run minus uh, 1.2 degrees negative camber. That seems to work really, really well. And then uh, instead of tow out at the back on IRS car, you tow in. So tow out at the front, IRS tow in at the back. And the same thing for the, uh, the uh, 550 cars, minus 1.2 negative camber, uh, and then tow in. Now, when you get to the track, I mean, typically, you know, how much camber you run at the track all boils down to, it boils down to, there's a lot of factors involved. Uh, how sticky your tires are, the spring rates you have. Uh, and and the, the thing is that what I tell people is I'll give them a starting, <clears throat> but you really need to use your parameter to figure out how much camber you need or don't need. Uh, typically, now, on my cars, when we, they go to the track, they're going to have negative two and a half on the hot side it's, if it's a if it's a clockwise track negative two and a half on the left side and negative two on the right side uh, and then from there then we start working on using well first we use the parameter to get a, a tire pressure set once the tire pressures are set and we'll look at the uh, the temperatures to get the camber right i like about around 10 10 15 degrees warmer on the inside than the outside uh, always run a little bit of negative camber and uh, keep adjusting the camber in and out until you're running that in that in that range uh if you got you know more than 20 degrees difference inside to out then if it's 20 degrees hotter on the inside than the outside you need to take a little bit of camber out uh, that's by standing the strut straight up uh if you know if it's about even you need to drop a little camber in uh, negative camber in so that's kind of the alignment specs and then the, you know the, the only way to tell it on track is to use a, a, a barometer and uh, see what the tires are telling you. Uh, and that's what we, every car, like I run, of course, if you've, if you've got like like soft factory springs, it's probably gonna take more negative camber because the car is gonna roll so much. Uh, the Mustang has what's called a positive roll front suspension, which means the more the car rolls, the more the front rear wheel wants to go positive. And we just saw positive is not what you want. So. That's why we add extra camber so when it does roll, the tire comes flat. But if you're running like factory springs, it's probably going to roll a lot more. And the thing is, is you really don't want to get beyond three degrees negative camber. I've, I've talked to people that run three and a half degrees negative camber, and it's like, you know, that's, that's not right. Uh, a lot of tire manufacturers don't like that one. Secondly, when you're going down the straightaway with that much negative camber, I mean, you're, you're missing a whole big portion of the the footprint of the front tires when you go to brake. So, I mean, you don't have a lot front tire to brake. That's why I like it in that two, two to two and a half degrees negative camber. So that's, uh, so go to the uh, Kenny Brown Speed Therapy Society face, private Facebook group resource section. And you, you can download that for yourself. Okay, moving right along. Let's see, what do we got? Oh, I, I think we got, let me pull up my, uh, my PowerPoint. Okay, we did fuel safe, we did caster camber. Now, hydro boost. Uh, like I was telling you on, uh, on, on Roy's car, I mean, it, hydro boost would work sometimes, it wouldn't work sometimes. Now, what is hydro boost? Okay, back when they put the, uh, the four valve motors in the SN95, the motors were so wide, they couldn't use a normal you know, vacuum based uh, power brakes. So what the uh, what the the hydro boost is is it actually use the uh, pressure from this power steering pump, the power steering pump uh, drives not only drives the power steering but it also is used for power brakes, and that's what this whole mechanism up here. That's the hydro boost. Well, when it works good, it works good. But in in Roy's case, I mean it. It was really spotty. Uh, sometimes it worked great. Other times he would have steering and no brakes, and then he would have brakes and no steering. So that's why we decided to <clears throat> just get rid of it and put him on full manual brakes. He had, he had already taken the ABS out a while ago, thinking that might be the problem, but it really wasn't. So we in switching over to manual brakes, uh, there's a couple people that have like uh, ad adapter kits or, or conversion kits to manual brakes. The problem is with all the kits that were out there is this. He has the uh, my my uh, Pro 4R race brakes on there, which are 
really serious brakes. Everybody that's put these on their car absolutely loves them. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, it's a true uh, full-on racing brake. Uh, I mean, you're not going to find anything better for the price. Uh, it has just about all the same features or most of the features that like a Brembo uh, uh, GTR would have. That's like, I think, $8,700 an axle set. Uh, but it, it's it's really cool. I mean, it's it's a really great brake setup. Uh, you know, big advantage is it actually, even though it's four it's four piston to make it lighter, uh, and then we also go ahead and lighten the caliper even more, and then uh, we use the same brake pad that we use on our six piston race calipers, exact same brake pad profile. Except the difference is we put a 25 millimeter brake pad on there, which means it's just about an inch thick front brake pad. So you can just imagine uh, how long a front brake pad will last if it's an inch thick. And then also the rotor, you know, the rotors are like uh, seven pounds lighter than a normal rotor, the racing rotors. Anyway, because of this, we couldn't use this, anybody's kits because they have the wrong master cylinder. So what we did is we got together with, uh, with uh, our friends at Bear, and they put us together a, they call it their, their I think their Reman, I can't remember exactly what they call it, but this is this is a, a full-on fabricated master cylinder, uh, and it's a really nice piece. Where you know most of the master cylinders out there are like plastic, this is actually aluminum. Even even the little screw caps screw caps on here are aluminum, so it's it's a really really nice piece. So we got that in uh, the size that uh, Rick thought would be the best for the Pro for ours. We had to, we modified the pedal. Uh, to give it like a seven to one ratio, and then we plumbed it in. Now, because we lost the the regular uh, uh, brakes uh, on the pedal, we lost the uh, brake pedal switch, brake light switch. What we did is we went to a pressure type, and we just kind of plumbed that in, so the brake switch is now uh, pressure driven. Now, because this is this is was the same size cylinder all the way through, uh, where a lot of the the OE uh, master cylinders are maybe two different sizes. Because of that, I mean, we don't need as much uh, fluid in the rear brakes. So for that, we added uh, bias adjustment. Now this this controls the amount of fluid that goes to the rear brakes. So in in the beginning of the race, we're going to have him, you know, run you know quite a bit of uh, rear brake because he's got a full fuel tank. He's got lots of weight in the back. But as the through the race, as the gas burns off then he's going to start uh, dialing some of the rear brake out because if you got too much rear brake and the back's too late and when you stab the pedal, uh, the back of the car will either get loose or it'll just spin around. So you have to be, have to kind of work at it, but that's why we, that's how we uh, uh, adjust the brakes uh, bias. This is a, uh, this is through a li the liquid. As the brake fluid comes through, it's, it's valved down or up depending on how much rear brake we want. So, I'm clicking buttons here. So, Hydro Boost, uh, I guess we're, oh, if you got any questions, please send them in. And before Carrie butts in, uh, I'm Kenny Brown. This is Speed, it, this, not Speed Therapy. It, <laughs> this is Cars and Coffee with me, where I'll be answering questions. I've got some good questions coming up, and we'll be answering more questions coming in. And then we'll talk about the, uh, uh, this, uh, the uh, Transforming Driving Experience Workshop that's coming up, I think it's next week already. Gosh, how time flies. And we just, uh, uh, for, for those that maybe haven't been with us for a while, uh, back here is my old toolbox. And the reason I keep it around, that, that's been with me for like 50 years. And it's been just about every major racetrack in North America. So it's something I'm well attached to, and I still use it every day. Uh, and the... The squiggles on the board behind me. Well, that was from the uh, the the last couple of weeks of the Speed Therapy Academy, which just we just graduated our second class Thursday night. Uh, the uh, last couple of weeks, we really I teach all about the car and all the systems, and then we get down to uh, how to make the car work. You know, cause and effect, things to do, tuning, adjusting, and then in the last little bit, I do virtual driving coaching. Where, where guys will send in their in-car videos and, you know, we'll go through and do some virtual uh, uh, driver coaching. And this is, this is some of the diagrams I had for uh, some of the trickier turns and uh, the best way to go through that. 
So uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, Am I up to? Oh, questions. I forgot questions. We got some great questions. Okay. Uh, yeah, you got some great questions that were sent in. Again, if you got any questions this morning, send them in. Uh, Will wanted to know suggestions for two piece rotors for 0304 Mach 1 Cobra factory calipers, slotted only. Well, uh, slotted, the only rotors we carry are slotted. Uh, we only, only have slotted rotors. In fact, we have specific part numbers at Bear, so that all our brake kits only come with slotted rotors. Uh, and the, the reason for that, I mean, you need slots so that, that you can clear brake dust. Also, uh, when the brake pad it gets hot, you get a little bit of uh, gas built up between the pad and the rotor. And if you don't have slots, it seems to build up at the back. And that's why I don't know if you've ever uh, if you don't have slotted rotors, I don't know if you've ever, you know, been on the brakes for the weekend and take your pads off and notice a kind of a wedge uh, that we're wearing unevenly. The front's worn more than the back. Well, that's because of the gases that build up in the back. So slots let the gases out. Uh, never, ever use drilled rotors. I don't use drill, drill, drilled rotors for anything. Right? Because I can tell you, it doesn't take a whole lot of heat for drilled rotors to crack. And they always crack at the holes. Unconditionally, absolutely guaranteed. So we only use uh, slotted rotors. But getting back to your question, the question is actually, yes, we do. Uh, we've got uh, two-piece slotted rotors for the front and the back. Uh, and the, you know, the, the uh, two-piece slotted rotors cool so much better than standard rotors. Uh, with the, with the two-piece, the center is aluminum, which means it doesn't transmit heat into the bearings or wheels as much as a standard uh, rotor. Uh, and for the, uh, let's see, it's like 645 for the front for the pair and 595 for the pair in the rear. So, I mean, if you, if you want us to get you some, uh, give us a call uh, Monday and uh, Rich will fix you up. So yeah, we do have two piece lot of rotors and also we got great brake pads. And I, I pick the brake pads for customers based on the heat range that they're operating in. Uh, we're going to do a, a brake, uh, workshop here coming up at some point but you know getting getting you the right right brake pad compound is really really important uh in in, in track driving uh, you don't want to use a street pad on track you don't want to use a track pad on the street and when we get to the the the, uh, the, the brake uh, workshop we'll talk more about that but we can get you fixed up with really really nice brake pads we had we switched our track people to a different uh, uh brake I think a year and a half ago, and it's going really, really well. Uh, we can get them pre-bedded, so you don't have to waste a whole session uh, getting your brakes bedded. And, and, and they seem to be a lot friendlier on rotors uh, than the Hawks we were using. The Hawks, Hawk is a really good race pad, but for track days, it can be a little, a little rough on rotors. So we've got a whole different brakes, the brake pad system now. So there's your answer. Uh, slotted rotors, absolutely. For 0304 Cobra, and that's the one we're talking about with the, with the two piston uh, PBR caliper, uh, which was on the, the Cobras. Okay, Herstifer, uh, one of those suggestions on clutch and flywheel for a 550, as well as a short throw shifter, and you know, what else to do when, you, when trans is after to replace the clutch? Well, I tell you, there is a lot of really good uh, performance clutches out there these days. Uh, the, the thing that you want to steer towards is an organic clutch. Uh, it's simply because it's a lot easier uh, to let out and let in. Uh, if you get like, uh, some people just think they have to have a racing clutch. Uh, so they've got racing clutches in, in their track cars. And it's kind of a kind of a, a chuckle watching them try to get their car in the trailer. Because of the racing clutch, it's, it's, a, it's a light switch. It's either off or it's on. So, you know, you can't really slip the clutch to get up into the trailer. So I would go to an organic clutch and I would be sure that the, uh, they get both single and, and twin discs for a stock motor and single disc should be good. Just make sure whatever clutch you're looking at is good for at least, uh, let's see, 450, 500 uh, pounds of torque for horsepower. Uh, and that, that should be well within the, uh, the 550. Or, I mean, it, you could go for a, a twin disc and organic too. That would keep... That would be more than you needed. The other thing to do is uh, aluminum flywheel or a lightened steel flywheel. Anytime you can reduce rotating mass, uh, the engine is going to spool up faster. 
I mean, it just, just makes sense if you got this great big heavy weight and it's on a crank and you're trying to turn it, it's going to take a lot of effort. But you take half the weight out, it's going to be a lot easier to turn. So uh, aluminum flywheel, also aluminum drive shaft. Uh, that's more rotating mass that you can get rid of. And, and then have a good look at your uh, release bearing and make sure it's still good. Uh, that, that's the time to do it. But outside of that, that's pretty much it. You know, organic clutch, either one single disc or twin disc. Uh, and then a lightened uh, uh, steel or aluminum flywheel and then aluminum drive shaft. As far as shifters, <clears throat> I, I feel your pain. I just hate the way uh, the MT82 transmission shift. I mean, uh, I just, I, I don't like them at all. Uh, what we've been using uh, with great success is the, uh, the, the Barton shifter. And the reason we've gone to that is it actually, the entire shifter mounts to the transmission. Part of the shifting issues with the with the uh, S197 and 550s is part of the part of the shifter mounts on the transmission, and the other part mounts on the body. Okay, so think about this: if you're driving really hard, what's happening? Engine is torquing around. So if the engine is torquing around, that means the transmission is torquing around. So when you go to shift, you know at what point of the torque are you shifting at? So that's why it's important to get a shifter that has all of the mechanism mounted on the transmission. And you know, the Bartons are great. We, we use them in all the cars I build. I mean, it's like a toggle switch. I mean, bang, bang, bang. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's got a lot of fun to drive. So there you go. Uh, you know, you shop around. I mean, I don't, we don't really sell clutches, uh, so I don't have any, any particular brands in mind. Uh, I do know there's a lot of good ones out there. Uh, Ram, uh, let's see who else has the spec. Uh, anyway, I mean, there, there, there's the good ones. I would just check around and see which one you want to like. Okay, and let's see. Now, Bert wants to know thoughts of putting the 390 gears in a manual uh, 2002 Mustang GT with a 4.6. I mean, gear choice just it boils down to how you're using the car. I mean, it's uh, to, to give you an example, when, when we do it like real race cars, like pro race cars, and we got we can change the transmission gears, change the rear gear. Uh, what we're looking for is we want the rear gear that is going to be so that the the transmission is at. I mean the engine is just below red line at the end of the longest straight. Uh, if it's if it's if it's if it's getting to red line before that, we're going to you know drop the ratio down. If it's not getting to it, we're going to change the ratio. So we're looking for the ratio to be. The, the engine maxing out, just not quite maxing out the end of the longest straightaway. Uh, and typically what we'll use is uh, uh, 373 is something we'll use a lot. Now on the SN95s with the, uh, with like the six speed uh, in the, in the Cobras, we'll go to a 410, which uh, works really good in that combination. Uh, all our, all our S197s, uh, we ran 373s. So, I mean, 390 is right in that ballpark. I just need to figure out, you know, what you're trying to achieve and is it going to impact your, your top speed or your fuel economy? Uh, that's the other thing, too. But, I mean, 390 gears are fine. Uh, you know, it's like 355, 373, 390, 410. Anything in that range, uh, depending on what you want to do, it, is okay. Uh, and then also we use uh, torsion differentials, uh, torque sensing, uh, just simply because it, 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 it's mechanical. There's no clutches. So uh, we've talked about that, I think, a few weeks ago. So that when, when with the, with it's torque sensing, which means it's going to figure out which tire has the most grip, and it's going to bias torque to that tire. So there we go. Okay. Uh, now, probably, uh, do we want to do questions, Carrie, or do we want, to, or you want to talk about the what's coming up? Well, I think that we should probably talk about what's coming up. Um, and uh, also, this is the time right after we finish talking about the uh, speed or the Transform Your Driving Experience workshop, we will be going into questions. So if you have any questions, add them to the chat right now. Um, and um, how many of you, just curious, how many of you have uh, attended the Kenny's uh, Transform Your Driving Experience workshop? I'm assuming many of you have in this group. It's a pretty cool workshop. Um, I think the people that haven't attended, the people in it that have would tell you it's definitely worth the price of admission, which it's free. 
So, uh, but anyway, Kenny shares a whole bunch of information. Uh, again, this uh, Transform Your Driving Experience workshop is this coming Monday, and you must register. Uh, this year, we're, uh, or, or this session, we're going to have it on Zoom and also a telecast to our Facebook page. It will be on the Speed Therapy uh, Society Facebook group page. So uh, make sure you register. There will be a link in the comments, and also you can find it on the KennyBrown.com website. Uh, Ken, once you go to the next page, and that will kind of talk a little bit about, I'm going to take this banner off here. Let me see where I am. There we go. Take that off. Okay. So anyway, uh, Ken, I don't know if you want to chime in here, if you want to just drink your coffee and let me do the heavy lifting on this. Yeah, I got some coffee, so I just drink. <laughs> it is cars and coffee. So I'll just drink my coffee. Okay. Anyway, Transform Your Driving Experience Workshop. It's four days this, this time. Uh, first day is going to be, Kenny's going to be covering the uh, first critical steps to maximizing your driving experience. And that's pretty important. A lot of people miss that. Uh, day two will be uh, building your performance platform. And many of you who have been through this speed therapy uh uh, Society Academy or Speed Therapy Academy. My, I'm mixing up everything today. Uh, Speed Therapy Academy will know what those five performance platforms are. Uh, day three will be dialing in your car for maximum performance. And day four is refining your driving techniques and car uh, slash track prep, uh, prep tips. Uh, this is very valuable information for anybody that does a performance street driving, does on-track driving. We even have people in there that uh, are in the NASA series that are doing some uh, serious racing. So it's a good thing to join. Again, it's Monday, August 23rd, and uh, Brad is adding the link to the comments area. Uh, so you can click on that, or else you can always go to KennyBrown.com, and we will have information on there as well. Okay. You want to go to the last slide? Yeah, let's just go with that real quick. Now, I don't want you to get this confused with the Transform Your Driving Experience Workshop, but our fall session for the Speed Therapy Academy is starting September 14th. So if you've been thinking about that in the past, uh, contact me and uh, or else go on to the KennyBrown.com website and you will see a link there uh, to join. If you need to talk to somebody about it, just uh, give me a call and we can chat about it. Again, it starts uh, September 14th. That's about, I think, three or four weeks away. So uh, and what the difference between that and the Transform Your Driving Experience Workshop is Kenny takes it up a, about 10 notches from what he teaches in the workshop. And he uh, really teaches how to uh, take your car to the next driving level. So you learn how to do it in the workshop. He talks about why to do it. OK, so that's enough of me gabbing, I guess. Um, I think we're ready for questions. Let okay. me see. What well, I have a question. Do we have sure. any of our uh, Academy alumni out there this morning? We sure do. Why don't you uh, make a note who's out there? I know I saw Ben out there. Um, there's also um, from the uh, previous uh, Speed Therapy Academy, uh, there is, I saw Brian West, I think Joe, uh, Joe Johnson was there. It looks like Paul Dondero. There's a ton of them there. So uh, different people that have joined and gone through the, the uh, Academy. Let me get back to the comments here. So we have some questions coming in, Kenny. Oh, Steve Smith says he uh, previous, uh, attended two of the previous uh, uh, Transform Your Driving Experience workshops. That's pretty cool. It's, it's worth it. I think Joe Johnson, who is a, a, one of our alumni, maybe, no, it was Cliff. Cliff Glidden, who was one of our alumni, said uh, sometimes he needs to hear what Kenny says four times in order to really pick it up and apply it. And that's so true. Uh, I'm sure, Steve, that's probably why you watch it for a second time. So, <laughs> anyway, yeah, I think any of our alumni of the academy can tell you it's well worth the investment in time. It's what 16 weeks, Carrie, yeah. 15, 15, 16 weeks, yeah, uh, Tuesday and Thursday evenings. Mm -hmm. and so, we, yeah. I, I go through a lot. We call Tuesday evening immersion. So we really take a subject deep. Okay, what about our question today? Okay, let me see what we have here. Uh, we don't have a lot of questions, but we ha do have some comments. And let me go back. Uh, Tim Tomasek is on today, and he is in the Michigan area. He's from Southeast Michigan, but it's a Woodward Dream Cruise Day, world's biggest rolling cruise and car show. We've been there a number of times. That sure is fun. Um, I know Brian West is up there um, from the Academy. He's um, 
doing some driving events and also involved in that. So that that's always a fun event. Speaking of that, what are they doing? What are we doing in Indiana, Indianapolis, Ken? That kind of mimics these uh, Woodward Dream Crews. Do you remember? Uh, yeah, we're actually uh, one one of our friends is putting together Cruise Indy, and it is September eighteenth. Is that right, Carrie? Yeah, uh, September eighteenth, Saturday, September eighteenth morning, and there's going to be kind of like a uh, big car show. Uh, everybody, you know, drive their cars, and then there's kind of like a loop that they drive around, and then there's going to be an after party with, with all kinds of stuff. So we're actually going to make an attempt uh, to uh, come to you live from that event uh, Saturday morning, uh, the 18th. So fingers crossed everything will work. We've never done anything like this before. So, <laughs> and you know how great we are with technology. So we'll, we'll see how that turns out. What I think is interesting about Cruise Indy is that it is, uh, he's trying to create, obviously he'll never create what Woodward Dream Cruise is, but he really wants to create something like that in Indianapolis, up, up and down Meridian um, Street. And that's the main uh, street that connects uh, north to south Indy. So it's it's kind of a cool event to get involved in at the beginning. If you're in town that day, September 18th, please join us at the Cruise Indy. Um, let's see, here's, let yeah, me see. Is there any information on where it is? Um, that's a good point. I'm sure Brad can look up cruiseindy.com, Brad, and uh, put the link up. Again, cruiseindy.com. So it's, um, he'll be adding the link shortly if he's listening to me. Okay, the other thing, Angie Parrish is here, and she was very happy of what you talked about today. Um, let's see. I'm trying to go to see where my questions are. Um, Roy, Mer Roy Merck, I'm sorry, Rory, <laughs> I'm having trouble with my words today. Um, he has a, a, a comment. He said he has found doing a Sagna pump upgrade on the higher boost is almost always a must over the Ford units. Have you heard of that one, Ken? Uh, no, but that's good information to have. Appreciate that. And let's see. Um, Brad uh, has a comment, uh, a 390... 3.9 gear is a bit taller for a big track. We use a, a 3.9 in a 2000 Mustang, but we run on two inch taller tires. So that's his personal car, not the Kenny Brown cars. Yeah, and that, that's a good point because your rear end ratio is also directly proportionate to how tall your tires are. <clears throat> if you've got a really short tire, then you go to a 390 and it's going to be almost at the same as going to like a 410 or a 430. Uh, so if you got a really tall tire, uh, you know, you can use a deeper gear. I forgot to mention that. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. Okay. okay. We also have a couple questions from, uh, Paul Dondero. I'm not sure if this is a comment or a question. Hey, Kenny at Blackhawk farms just got finished. Our uh, first session car works as advertised, just drove through group three with our little V six. Woo hoo, Paul. That is great news. And Paul has the K-Link on the car. Yeah, he's got AGS 4.5. Yeah. Actually, Paul is fitted out. He has our front grip kit, the Kenny Brown front grip kit, the Kenny Brown uh, grip kit too, which is uh, includes uh, Kenny's innovative K-Link. He also has the, I believe he has the uh, Bear Pro 4Rs, and he also has forge line wheels along with uh, cooling and Arrow, he's got everything, and it's a V6. He, he calls his car Rod, a Rodney Dangerfield. He's a, yeah, he's a V6, and he just runs away from the V8s on track because it's a, it's all about corner exit speed, and it's all about speed is in the chassis, and we'll talk about that. And it also, are we doing another uh, uh, private intro on the K-Link coming up here soon? Uh, yes, that will be the private intro will be uh, the third week in September. I'm guessing, I don't have a calendar, but it's a Wednesday. Uh, so we are going to uh, start doing uh, Wednesday, third Wednesday's uh, workshops. So September will be on the K-Link and October will be on uh, breaks, a uh, mini break workshop. Um, we'll be posting that uh, probably after we get through the uh, Transform Your Driving Experience workshop. Rory has another comment or question. Do you know what would be required firewall-wise when using a fuel cell in the spare tire when it, if you are running a hatchback or, as, or it's an open air to driver as I ran into this in my drag wagon? Uh, I... It, it kind of depends. 
I think it depends on the sanctioning body. Uh, a lot of sanctioning bodies have different regulations, but I mean, a firewall could be as easy as just a piece of aluminum, uh, just kind of you know, screw it in or pop it in. And this is, this is you'll say, what is it? Uh, hatchback. Uh, yeah, hatchback. That, that kind of makes it more difficult. You probably just have, have to build an aluminum, al aluminum, you know, kind of wall and just have it come up to the hatch that that should be okay. And again, it depends on the sanctioning body. Uh, if you've got a fuel cell, that might not be a problem. Uh, but yeah, I, I just don't know. Every sanctioning body has different rules. So I check with the rules. And then if you need uh, something for a firewall, just, you know, get, get some sheet aluminum and, uh, and, and put it back there. Okay. Um. Okay, so this is last call for questions. We have a few left, but if you have any uh, questions, please add them to the comments and Kenny will answer them. Um, let's see, Rory, uh, Ben Vollmer, he says he's here and he just graduated from this last Speed Therapy Academy. He said, I can attest to its value, really good stuff. So Ben just ran a lemons race, his first race. So that was fun to hear his stories and watch his video. Um, Brad also mentioned that if you can also reach out to him if you want to learn more about the Speed Therapy Academy. He's been through it a couple times. Uh, Brian West, uh, the roads around Indy have to uh, be better than Detroit. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, that, that's why American cars are so soft and squishy is because of roads in Detroit. And Colby has another comment on the Woodward Dream Cruise. He said, Ford is showing their new Explorer ST Track SUV at Woodward. Have you ever souped up an S SUV, Kenny? Uh, actually, yes. Uh, a number, you know, over the years, uh, we did a series of uh, supercharged Explorers. Uh, we did some supercharged Expeditions. And we, I don't just supercharge, we do supercharge and we add power. We have to go through and improve the platform. Uh, you know, the chassis, suspension, brakes, things like that. So we've done Explorers. Uh, we set up a Mountaineer for Lynn St. James for, uh, I think it was One Lap of America. Uh, Expeditions. Uh, what was What's the great big one? The uh, I can't remember what the big SUV is that Ford has, the V10. We've super the Navigator? Na no, no. This is, the, this is the monster SUV, the V10 one. Uh, I can't remember. When we supercharge those, we supercharge the Navigators. Uh, let's see, oh, for uh, a 99 SEMA show, uh, some guys I know at Ford came to me and wanted to know if, if I would do a minivan that was cool enough for dad to drive for SEMA, and we, we did. I mean, it was it was a killer minivan. Uh, I knew the guys in, in a Thunderbird group, and uh, back then the minivan had a, the 3.8 V6, and I was able to scrounge up enough pieces from the T-Bird group to put an Eaton supercharger on it. Uh, man, we did everything. We had Cody shocks. We had 20-inch wheels. We're car seats. Uh, this is back. We had two two different uh, screens, drop-down screens in the back. That's before they were they were out there. The yeah, the video screens. So, so. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it was a ball <coughs> chasing down Corvettes on entrance ramps. <laughs> so yeah, we've done a lot. Even some Durangos for a dealer. We did some supercharged Durangos. Hey, Kenny, maybe you should pull out some information uh, from your archives on uh, some of the, the SUVs you did. Maybe okay. we can do that in a session. See what I can find. Yeah. And then uh, the next question, okay, Brad did put up the link for Cruise Indy. Uh, we are going to be there, or Kenny's going to be there. You don't want to see me. But Kenny is going to be there and doing the Cars and Coffee live on uh, September 18th. So if you're in the area, join us. We'd love to get as many Mustangs as we could there. Um, ben Vollmer, uh, have you thought about doing a driving school similar to Bondurant or, or others? I would attend a class like that from Kenny. Uh, yeah, it's a good question. I mean, it's a question that keeps coming up and coming up and coming up. The answer is yes, eventually, but right now we've got our plates really full. Uh, you know, going back in history, I think last, last week I talked about the, uh, we used to do like two or three a year back in the 90s. Uh, we would partner with uh, Muscle Mustangs Magazine and Track Time. And we, you know, we would sell out uh, for, the, for our driving schools. And uh, yeah, well, we used, like I say, we used to do a lot of them. Uh, but it's, uh, we just, it, it's a matter of bandwidth and time right now. 
but it's, it's on everybody keeps asking it's on the list we will get there at some point so should i give my answer kenny oh god no <laughs> ben we will be doing one next year so la, 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 la. <laughs> so it is on the schedule for next year as long as we're not on any kind of lockdown or anything we will be scheduling um uh, plug your ears again, Kenny. <laughs> so I'd like to do more than one. We'll see if we can get them out on a couple different tracks through the United States. Anyway, and we're going to pull in. Herstifer is going to join us from uh, Bulgaria for that too, Kenny. Okay. Okay. So here, uh, Rory has, um, I'm not sure what this means because I'm, do you, do you understand that? Why he would add that? He asked you a question earlier, XP8 FTW. Uh, XP8, was that... Is that like a cougar or a Mercor? Yeah, I can't remember. It sounds, sounds really familiar. I just can't place it. And then Brian West said it was an excursion. And that's what it was. That was a big, <laughs> yeah, we supercharged a couple of those. Yeah, we had really had to modify the front of it uh, to get enough air uh, for the supercharger to, to, to uh, feed the V10. And then Rory, uh, please post archives for the explorers. We can definitely do that. Brad, did you get that note? I'm reading a note here. And then um, Ben Vollmer is in. He is in for your track event next year. And um, just to let you know that uh, Speed Therapy Academy uh, members get first priority for any um, events that driving events getting does. So make sure you drive that event. And Keith Ramsey also said it was excursion. So if this is the very, very last call for any questions that you have for Kenny today, um, while we're waiting for questions to come in, I'm gonna ramble on more about the Transform Your Driving Experience workshop that's coming up. When is it coming up, Kenny? Monday. Monday, uh, the 23rd is a four day free online workshop that you can- uh, <laughs> We just had a big, uh, big flash here. Wow, um, so anyways, a four day, uh, free online workshop it starts at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, so make sure you register. There's a link in the comments where you can register. Uh, we have, Kenny, I don't know if you know this, but we have about 450 people registered so far. Wow. Yeah, and we have two days left for people to register. So make sure you get in there. We're gonna cut it off at 500. So if you're interested, make sure you register today. And let's see if we have any more questions here. Oh. Uh, Rory was talking about the Celine XP8 Explorer. Oh, uh, That's yeah, I know virtually nothing about it. Uh, you know, my 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 experience with Celine was '86 and '87. Uh, you know, we won the 24 Hours of Canada in '86 with our, our backup car, and then I re-engineered the car Celine R, the race cars for '87, and we pretty much dominated the series. We won all four national championships. So after that, you know, my, you know, Steve and I parted directions. I mean, he was famous and I was broke. So uh, that's why we went different ways. But yeah, I mean, I, I ran that whole program for Celine in 86 and 87. So speaking of that, Kenny, um, Rick Titus uh, uh, connected with you, wish you a happy birthday. Um, oh, by the way, it was Kenny's birthday Wednesday. So we had a great evening of scotch drinking. Uh, but anyway, what- uh, Single malt scotch. See, uh, Steve, uh, uh, Rick Titus uh, connected with you. I'm wondering if it would be good to have him on your show. What do you think? Yeah, I think let's, let's see if we can get him on uh, get him on the show sometime. I mean, Rick, Rick is a, a great guy. Uh, he's the son of Jerry Titus, the uh, you know race Trans Am back in the '60s, and uh, he was uh, he partnered with Steve uh, in the Celine R cars in '87. And uh, I was, you know, honored to give him his national championship that he was, he, he so desired. Um, so, yeah, he's a great guy. He's uh, been in media a long time. It's a really, really entertaining guy to talk to. Uh, he's really cool. So, yeah, I mean, it would be awesome to have him on sometime. So just comment if you'd like to, if you'd like to have that so, a little Celine session. So that would be kind of fun. Um, let's see. Oh, Brad says Rick wants to come on the show. We just need to get him scheduled. And Rick has his own show. Um, maybe next week we'll post up the link for that. He's I listened to it. It's pretty interesting. So I think, Kenny, we're out of questions. You have 10 minutes. Woo. Well, I, I do a song and dance, but I don't sing very well and my feet are sore. So I guess uh, I'm going to have to 
Uh, what else can I talk about? Oh, my toolbox. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we can end the session. My, we my can toolbox, end. I've been to Avery Racetrack in North America, and I've got this, this Formula One at Zanford up there because Formula One's going to be back at Zanford this year, I think in a couple of weeks. Uh, it's, the, it's, the, it's a really cool track. And uh, that's that's the time that's that was the preview the first the, the premiere of the Cosworth uh, V8 in the Lotus that uh, from that point on just kind of really kicked butt. It's actually it's actually signed by Keith Duckworth, who is the Worth in Cosworth. So that, that's why that's up there because in tribute to Formula One being back at Zanfort this year. So, uh, a couple other things, uh, Lama is this weekend too. So that's good. And one more thing, uh, congratulations to the graduating class of the Speed Therapy Academy. The Thursday was their last night and they they took their graduation quiz and passed it with flying colors. So again, one more comment from me and then Kenny, you can take it over. Uh, remember to, to sign up or register for the four day Transform Your Driving Experience Workshop, which is starting on Monday. Okay, well with that, uh, I think we're done. Uh, so. If nobody has anything else. Oh, we have one last question. Okay. <laughs> Are you ready for that? Yeah. See, we always have a last one. That's why I like to waste a little bit of time at the end. Um, let's see. Anibus, are you going to be redoing your rear shock tower brace? And I'm assuming that's for the S197 since we have the SN95s out. Uh, the answer is yes, we have a prototype. Uh, but manufacturing has been slammed. I mean, we're we're selling a lot, you know, a lot of suspensions right now. Uh, obviously, people love my suspensions, but it is it is in line. So, the thing we ran into with 197s is something called production tolerance. Uh, we originally had one; it would only fit some cars. Some cars it was too short. Some cars it wasn't long enough. So we actually came up with an adjustable one just for that reason. Uh, so it, it's it, it's in line. We just haven't got to it yet. So the answer is yes. Okay, Ken. Here's one for you. You're gonna go. Ah. Ready? You should have had the Lama pitch up picture up. Oh. <laughs> You're right, Brian. Maybe I put it up next week. Okay. We have one last question from Morari. He has are all SN95 RS hubs 31 spline? Hubs. The 31 spline is in the differential, uh, and I don't think they're 31. Like in, in the IRS cars, uh, I mean, the an IRS car is the 0304 had the 31 spline axles. Uh, I can't remember what the other one, maybe 29, something like that. I mean, it's been so long, I can't remember. But uh, no, it's just, just the 30, 31 splines is uh, 0304. And the others, I think, are 29 or something like that. And in, in the uh, in the older ones, anytime we upgrade them, we always go to a 31 spline uh, torsion and then get the axles for uh, 0304 Cobra. 28 spline. There we go. I knew it was 20 something. So. Okay. That is it for today. Okay. Well, with that, uh, we'll see what we can do and get Rick on here. We'll post up the link to his, his show next week. Uh, it's, it's, it, he's, he's super entertaining. It really worth the time. So that I wish everybody a good rest of the weekend. And for those that are attending the workshop, I will see you on Monday night. Uh, everybody else, I'll see you next week. I have no idea what we're talking about next week. So if you have some ideas for subjects you want me to talk about, send them in through the Kenny Brown Speed Therapy Society private Facebook group. <laughs> Got it all in. Yay. Okay. Well, with that, uh, everybody have a good weekend. Uh, thank you for coming. I hope you learned something because that's what I'm here for is to teach you. So we'll see you either Monday night or next week. Good night. Or good night. Goodbye.